Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and today we're going to be taking a look at the KFA2 GeForce GTX 980 Hall of Fame Edition. It's the Hoff card. Now just to kind of let you know there's been um, some stuff going on with KFA recently to do with their name. It was Galax and now it's back to KFA2 but it's all kind of the same people so don't get confused, you know, don't kind of really worry about it. It's just some, um, I think it was like copyright or some naming issue with someone. I think it was based in Germany. Doesn't really matter. So they've had a bit few problems with having to change the name backwards and forwards, but it's still all the same people. Um, and it's obviously the uh, white PCB one. Now it's something people have been saying to me for such a long time to, about getting in. And I have to admit, when I initially saw it, I wasn't too keen on it, but I saw one at a show recently so I did get hold of them and express an interest in getting one in and they've graced me with the top flight 980 version. What we'll do is we'll have a look at the card up close and then we'll do, go into some overclocking because I've had quite a play with the overclocking. We've also done all of our benchmarking at 1080, 1440 and 4K. You can click the link underneath or there's some YouTuber doing some bloody card thing now which they want me to use. So uh, I'll set up a card thing which you can click through to go and look at all the graphs on the Overclock 3D website. So you can go and see a good range of results there and you know, compare whether you think it's any good or not. And then obviously at the end we'll smack an award in and have a conclusion. And so we get our first look. And you'll notice I've not shown you the box because there's nothing really exciting in there apart from this door hanger. It's got the usual cables to be able to uh, connect a Molex onto your um, PCR Express, which I would never ever suggest anyone uses. Always use a direct cable to your um, Molex, uh, sorry, to your PCR Express. Do not use the little add-in cables that they give you. You don't need them. If you haven't got the right connectors, you shouldn't be um, uh, using this. You need a proper power supply to power this, or at least a decent one. But showing you around the card. So we've got the three fans. There are some good chunky heat pipes on the inside. You can see there's a lot of uh, heat sink when you think about it. And if I show you this end, you can see that it hangs off the bottom of the second slot. I'd say it's quite close to being three slot. It's more like two and a half, two and three quarters. This button around the back, you'd think might be something to do with overclocking or something like that, but it's actually, uh, you can smash it on even when the system's on and it just turns your fans up to 100%. And surprisingly, as you'll hear in a bit, these um, uh, don't go passive. A lot of 980s and especially 970s will go passive at idle, which means the fans don't spin. This one doesn't, but uh, it is still quite quiet. And even when you smash that button in, it's not overly loud. And by that, I mean, I've heard much worse. You've obviously got your uh, DVI here. You've got three display ports and a HDMI. So if you wanted to run, for argument's sake, triple um, uh, G-Sync, you'd need these ones, which isn't too bad. You've got HDMI if you want to put an out out to a, a monitor with your audio or something. And then you've obviously got the normal uh, DVI-D down there. Two SLI tabs. What we can do is we can see that you've got the PCB that's white as well. I spent a lot of time making sure that that won't go yellow over time. And believe me, that's actually quite difficult. I will show you in a bit, but this does actually light up as well. There you go, you can see the cable there, but it, that does light up. It does hang out the end a little bit, but most surprisingly, considering that they've spent so much time getting that white PCB right, they've gone and put a silver backplate on it. Now, it's not the most amazing looking silver backplate of that. It's got like a brushed alley kind of a look to it, but it's more the fact that they've gone to all that effort with the white and they shove silver on the top. I mean, I know people that actually buy white backplates. The fact it's got a backplate is obviously a much better thing than not having, because then people would probably be moaning about the kind of like all the different colors and stuff all over the PCB. But mm, I mean, I suppose you could paint it, but I don't know. It just, it does feel to me like it's something I think 
should be white as well or at least maybe having like a two-way sort of like back plate so it is the white but then they've got something over the top to put the silver on it like they did with the fans but it's surprisingly won me over because i have to admit when i first saw the white pcbs i wasn't a hundred percent sure but now i've got it and it's in my hands the white pcb is actually quite nice it's just that isn't but i'm going to stop going on and on about it you can you can tell that it's kind of got my uh, uh ocd going you can see the nice little half logo down there as well but it does look rather nice so here we have the card in our test system just zoom you out a little bit so you can see it all but essentially we've got it in our uh, 760t our custom gpu test rig it's a rampage 4 black edition we're still on the rampage 4 so all the graphs and everything all match up 16 gigabyte corsair memory that's actually the uh, h100i gtx that we tested just recently the power supply is massive overkill but it just means when i do the crazy four-way sli stuff that um uh it, it's actually got the gubbins there and I don't have to keep swapping power supplies in and out we've got the AX 1500i now you can see the uh, Hoff card in here it does seem to have a little bit of drop or droop I should say down this end I've tried my best to kind of tailor that out around the um, the, the, the mounts around the back of the cards and I've even actually got the the cables here sort of set up in such a way that they're trying to hold the card up rather than pull the card down and I, do you know what I mean? I can't really, oh, flipping it. Let me chop my finger off because the fans are spinning. Because um, the, the, the fans never actually go passive. But anyway, so I've not been able to take that droop out of it. It's not particularly a problem. I just know it can be a bit of a bugbear for people. Um, obviously, as well, is with this, actually, all does light up nice. As we've said before, it's not particularly dark here today because it's, daytime but we can zoom you in and it does all look rather lush get a little bit of reflection from the motherboard on the top of the card there those lights are nice and subtle if you've got a uh, tinted window on the side of the case you might find they're not bright enough but obviously you don't want things kind of being too glary loud you know silly loud because then you're going to struggle with uh, you know being distracted when you're gaming we have turned our case lights off today as well so that you can see this a little better with our case lights on however you can see that it does make it kind of a little bit more mysterious it does kind of like spread the light around a little bit better um the shadows i think work kind of well with it uh, so maybe this is something that you might want to consider with your rig if you're you know thinking about getting one of these i think it's always nice to see the way different people have done different things with the cards and the lighting and stuff to give you kind of inspiration for what you may want to do with your own rig but we've got all this down what we're going to do is we're going to yomp straight in with some overclocking so here's the overclock settings uh we used asus gpu tweak although you could use msi afterburner if you wanted it's just nice to be able to see the range of stuff that we did also, we've got the temperature test for the overclock in this as well. So when you have a look on the graphs on the main website or the ones that I show you here, these are the overclock settings that we used. And what we can also see is we've only gone up to 66 degrees. The fan speed has only gone up to 55%, but it has gone up to nearly 2,500 RPM. But this one doesn't go passive, as I've already said, and it's pretty much at 1,200 RPM at stock. Although, uh, even though it did go up to 2,500 RPM, it was quite quiet. Um, and it has kept the temperatures right down as well. So that's the, the fact that the temperatures are so low, even though we've got a huge overclock, and you can see we've got an awful lot of volts here as well. Um, uh, if I was to put that at stock, it's that right down the other end of the graph. Now what you can see is we've got the boost set here to 1500 megahertz. But the most important thing to remember is, the, although that's what the boost is set to, when you have a look on uh, GPU-Z, it does say 1500 megahertz boost but you need to remember the uh, nvidia gpu boost too because it, that effectively then pushes it up to 1536 megahertz now with this it didn't really like the memory being played with or anything like that and we did get our best scores out of it however i would actually say this is a lot more of a sensible overclock marginally different very very small differences and essentially what you can have a look here is we've got the um, uh, 
the boost is actually only 1468 megahertz but then the GPU clock, when it goes through the GPU boost too, it then does boost it up to 1500 megahertz. So you do get your 1500 megahertz, which is kind of a um, like a golden child for most people when it comes to these cards at the moment. One thing you need to remember is the silicon lottery. This is what I've had to do on my card, but try and use similar kind of processes for your own. Um, but the one thing I do want to say is we've got the uh, memory up from uh, 1753 up to 1900 megahertz. But the most important thing, is I've actually not touched the GPU volts at all. So all I've really done is up to the core clock a little bit, 1468, then let the GPU boost do its thing, and then um, uh, we had a little bit of a memory increment. And you can see the X score, which I've just run for you here, 34,910. And I think this is a pretty, really nice and safe because you're not overclocking the nudges out of it. Um, there's no extra volts in there, and this is 100% stable. But the other really surprising thing, and we've run these tests through, and this is why I've got it all here so that you can see it, is uh, bearing in mind we're on the 2011 rig that I showed you before, the maximum watts that, that we've pulled from the wall has been 383 from the wall, and the system's actually only been pulling about 360 watts. And when we uh, use that, it's the same way that we test all of the wattages on the cards and we use uh, Unigen Valley, it's actually one of our, uh, our favoured tests, we use this for temps as well. We stick it in 1440 mode eight times, and uh, we've actually found that this programme uh, is uh, better than any of the, the games that we use for power draw. Um, so, you know, this is our personal way, and obviously then it all ties in with all of the other graphs and results that we've done. Um, so you've got two options for the overclocking there, you've got the balls to the wall, but I think with all those extra volts for you know just 30 extra megahertz, I don't think it's really worth it. Um, but don't forget what I said about silicon lottery. Each card can be m drastically different. If you don't get 1500 megahertz, the card's not at fault, you've just not won that silicon lottery. You may actually be able to get more of an overclock with less volts or you know not even touching it. So please just use this as a kind of guide on how I've managed to get the best from mine, or the options that I've had with mine. So when we look at the first of our graphs, we're going to start off with uh, Firestrike, and you've got uh, Firestrike, Firestrike Extreme, and Cloudgate there. But what you can see is if you look through that graph, we've got the, uh, the Hoth, kind of top, middle, kind of that kind of respect. But it's actually the top of all the single chord cards in that graph. Now I know we always get people going, Ooh, where's the AMD cards? Well, this is the top end of a graph. We've not taken any AMD cards out. There's just in our graphs, because we have big spreadsheets, there's actually none really in that section at all. Um, so you can see as far as uh, 980s are concerned, it's pretty much the top there. And anything above it is um, uh, multiple cards, whether it's the, the two 780 ties or the, then when we go into the kind of 980 SLIs. It's pretty much the same kind of thing when we move on to the uh, Firestrike Ultimate, which is their new 4K test. This is a much smaller graph because it hasn't been out that long and we've not been able to test much on it. But you can see that we've done the MSI and the Galax 970 on there and we've just um, uh, it really is, again, it's the top of the single chord ones that we've done so far, no matter whether it was a stock or an overclock kind of setting. You can also see that the stock cough is faster than the MSI gaming overclocked, which is a pretty broad statement in itself. So we've got our 4K gaming results here, but if you're interested in the 1920 by 1080 or the uh, 1440 results, because we do test all three, you can just go and have a look on the Overclock 3D website, click in the link underneath or click the little card thing that YouTube's just started using, and you can go and see all the results there and compare it with all the other different cards. Uh, but uh, obviously this is, uh, we've got 4K and 1440 in here, just to kind of give you a bit of balance. Um, but uh, what you can see, um, or sorry, what I should say, is that all the games are completely maxed out, including all the AA as well. Obviously with 4K, if you turn the AA down to half or down to zero, then it's going to make a huge difference on FPS. But we prefer to stress it within an inch of its life, because then at least you know that um, you're going, if, you're, if you want to turn yours down a bit, you'll be getting slightly better performance. 
Okay then, so conclusion time and the award first and we're gonna give it the OC3D Gold Award and it's thoroughly deserved because essentially, nice quick conclusion we could try and do, is essentially the fastest card that we've ever had our hands on. Now to get it to the point of being the fastest card that we've ever had our hands on, as I've shown you with the two different types of overclocking, to get it that little bit further, you do need to put a lot of volts through and I'd probably kind of err on the side of caution and go with that second set that I showed you, which didn't need any um, extra volts or anything like that. It's worth pointing out though, that without those extra volts and the, you know those few little extra megahertz, that it uh, does scream off into the distance anyway, and it's still gonna be sat at the top of all those graphs that we did show you. Um, so essentially, rather than putting the boost up to 1500, you just let the GPU boost two take you that, you know, those few extra megahertz a little bit further. The temperatures will stay roughly the same anyway, because the, uh, we left the cards fans on auto. Although if you did want to uh, manually set them, you could probably make them come down a little bit more anyway. To be honest with you though, I'd be happy with 66 degrees. I'd prefer to air on the side of quiet rather than, you know, trying to get the temperatures down to like 60 degrees or whatever and then been able to hear it. Um, those are all things that you guys can kind of do. As you've seen in the graphs also, out the box stock, it's still a screaming crazy nutter of a card. Um, it's 1400 boost on the, you know, the one side of GPU-Z, but then once GPU boost actually kicks in, it's running 1450 megahertz out of the box. Anyway, so it's an absolutely crazy barnstormer of a card, but with our one at least, because we do obviously have to remember about the silicon lottery, is that there is a little bit more to be found there, even if you don't change the volts at all. So you should be able to get it, you know, that little bit further, if you're lucky. Some of you might not be, but in the same breath, some of you might actually get a better card. This one is a press sample, and I know it's been around a lot of places uh, before it managed to find its way here. Um, so it's had a hard life anyway, but if you may, you know, get you, um, they are retail samples before people think they're cherry picked, uh, but you may find that the one that you pick up at your local shop or retailer or something may actually be slightly better than this. Whatever happens though, it's all about taking it, playing with it, and seeing what you can get out of it. Or if you don't really care about overclocking that type of thing, smash it in there, connect it up, forget about it, and it will be an absolute blazer. The only real negative point that I've uh, taken from this, one of them's pretty minor, and that's it's not passive like a lot of the other 980s. The fans always spin, although they're not very loud, so it shouldn't really matter too much. Um, but the other thing, is a little bit more is I don't like that silver backplate. They've gone to all this trouble to make a white card and it all looked good and they spent a lot of time making sure that the white didn't go yellow with the heat and then they covered it up with a girt lump of silver when there's people out there that are buying white backplates to get a bit of white in their rig and yet they're covering this one up. So I think if the only negative point I would have on it is why isn't the backplate white? It would look so much nicer. Um, and you can also put some nice light black uh, decals on the top and stuff like that to kind of give it a bit of a monochrome effect. I think that would probably look a lot nicer because the silver in this, it just it doesn't kind of fit in with anything else. Unless you had like a humongous air cooler, which was like a massive silver chunk of metal in there, there wouldn't be anything else in the rig to kind of like fit in with it. But it's a very minor thing. Um, and obviously the performance is there. So if you like the way it looks, then you just ignore me. But most important thing to say is it has got the Overclock 3D Gold Award. I finally got one, um, and I, uh, like I said, other than that backplate, I haven't really got anything to moan about. So it's an absolute corker of a graphics card. It's the fastest single 980 we've ever tested. Um, and like I said, just think about the overclocking before you start smashing the volts in. Work your megahertz up before you start touching those volts, boys and girls. But for now at least, this is Tiny Tom Logan with another award for you, another video for you, out. Ding! Tiny sister Logan's just got back from school. Ding! Remote's broke! <laughs>